solving cubic equations. The next logical step in polynomial equations after quadratic equations is cubic equations. A cubic equation has a cubed term or a variable raised to the third power. Cubic equations or third degree polynomials may also have a quadratic term, a linear term, or a constant term, or any combination of these terms, but the cubic term is the only term necessary to have it be a cubic equation. In this equation, the cubic term is n cubed, the quadratic term is 2n squared, the linear term is negative 3n, and the constant term is 8. The standard form of a cubic equation is ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals 0, and the standard form of a quadratic equation is shown above for a basis of comparison. One key contrast between cubic equations and quadratic equations is the possible number of solutions. While a quadratic equation may have one, two, or even no solutions, a cubic equation can have one, two, or even three solutions. There will always be at least one solution to a cubic equation. One of my viewers of the earlier version of this video corrected me on this point. There are always three solutions to a cubic equation, but only one of them has to be a real solution. And why is that? It's because of the possibility of imaginary numbers. As cubic equations are more complex than quadratic equations, there are not as many practical ways to solve them. But we'll go over three methods today, finding the cube root, graphing, and factoring. As in the case with quadratic equations, some methods work better than others for certain situations. We'll first look at solving an equation using the cube root method. This is a problem that could be a practical application. For this one, we have a cube-shaped container that holds 1.331 liters of liquid or 1,331 milliliters. Each milliliter is a centimeter cubed. The equation for this relation is x to the third power equals 1331, where x is the length in centimeters of one side of a cube. Find the length of one side of the cube in centimeters. What we're looking for is the number that when multiplied by itself three times is equal to 1331. We could start out working by trial and error, but the easiest way to do it is to use a graphing calculator. First, press the math key, arrow down to the cube root option 4, press enter. Enter the number we want the cube root of, 1331. Press enter. We see that the side length of the cube is 11 centimeters because 11 times 11 times 11 equals 1331. This method is probably the easiest method to solve cubic equations, but it only works if you have just a cubic and a constant term. A quadratic term and or a linear term will make this method unusable. Another way of doing this on the calculator is to take the number 1331 to the power of one third. It's the same as the cube root, and I hope you can see that it gives us the same answer of a side length of 11 centimeters. We're now going to solve this cubic equation by graphing x cubed plus 3x squared minus 10x minus 24 equals 0. This equation has a quadratic and linear term and is therefore not a candidate for the cube root method. We first change this equation into a function so we can graph it. We change the 0 to y. The function is y equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 10x minus 24. Now we enter the cubic function y equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 10x minus 24 in the y equals view. This symbol, the caret or rooftop key at the right side of the keypad just below the clear key, it means to the power of, in this case to the power of 3. To graph, press graph or press zoom 6 to assure a standard window. The solutions are represented by where the function crosses the x-axis and we see that there are three solutions, or I guess I should say three real solutions. The roots look like maybe negative 4, negative 2, and then 3 or positive 3. We make certain by going to the table view by pressing second graph. We see the two solutions, negative 4 and negative 2, here, and scroll down to see our third solution, 3. The solutions are found wherever the y values are 0. So our solution set is negative 4, negative 2, and 3 here in set notation. For solutions between integers, we can use the calc menu and use the zero option, right bound and left bound and so forth. See the solving quadratic equations by graphing part 3 or evaluating quadratic functions videos to see this technique demonstrated. Lastly, we'll look at solving a cubic equation by factoring. This can be difficult to do, but has the advantage of being able to be done without a calculator. 
If we happen to know one of the factors it makes our job a whole lot easier. For this one we'll assume that we're given no factor to start. We could launch into trial and error, but we'll use one thing to, to find a factor to get off to a good start. We can use something called the factor theorem. And that is, if f of x is a polynomial and f of p is 0, then x minus p is a factor of f of x. We apply the factor theorem by changing the equation into a function. It becomes f of n equals n cubed minus n squared minus 10n minus 8. We can try f of 1, and since f of 1 ends up being negative 18 and not 0, we know that p is not 1. Next, we can try p equals negative 1. So since f of negative 1 equals 0, we know that, f, that p equals negative 1. So we have x minus negative 1, which equals x plus 1 as a factor. And now having used the factor theorem, we know that n plus 1 is one of the binomial factors. We start the process of long division. First we take n cubed divided by n and get n squared. Then we multiply n squared by n and get n cubed and place it beneath n cubed here. Then we multiply n squared by 1 to get n squared and place it beneath the negative n squared here. Then we subtract n cubed from n cubed and get 0. And then n squared from negative n squared to get negative 2n squared. We now bring down the negative 10n from above. Now we divide what we have at the bottom, negative 2n squared, by n and get negative 2n, which goes on top. Then we take that negative 2n and multiply it by n to get negative 2n squared and put it below the negative 2n squared here. Then we take negative 2n and multiply it by 1 to get negative 2n and put it beneath the negative 10n here. We then subtract negative 2n squared from negative 2n squared and get 0. Then we subtract negative 2n from negative 10n and get negative 8n. We need to use our integer math here well or we'll make a mistake. We bring down the negative 8 from above and place it here. Now divide negative 8n by n and place the result negative 8 on top. Now multiply negative 8 by n to get negative 8n and place it below negative 8n here. Next, multiply the negative 8 by the 1 to get negative 8 and place it below the negative 8 here. Then we subtract negative 8n from negative 8n and also negative 8 minus negative 8, which is 0 for both calculations. So we've successfully factored out quantity n plus 1 and have the trinomial n squared minus 2n minus 8 left to work with. Alternatively, we could have done this part using a synthetic division. We place negative 1 here at the left side of the frame. Then we place the coefficients of the dividend here at the top. We bring down 1 into the n squared's place. Then we take negative 1 times 1, which equals negative 1. Then we take negative 1 plus negative 1, and that equals negative 2 in the n place. And then we take negative 1 times negative 2, which equals 2, and place it here at the bottom of the frame. And now we add negative 10 and 2 and place the sum negative 8 here below in the constant place. Now we take negative 1 times negative 8 which equals 8 and we place it here at the bottom of the frame. And now we take the sum of negative 8 and 8 and place 0 below in the remainder place. So we bring down our quotient n squared minus 2n minus 8. Now we need to factor the remaining trinomial n squared minus 2n minus 8. We have put the n squared and the negative 8 terms in the box at the uh, upper left and lower right cells respectively. In order to get the negative 2n linear term we need 2n minus 4 as a factor and n plus 2 as a factor. So broken into factors n cubed minus 2n minus n squared minus 10n minus 8 equals 0 is the same as quantity n plus 1 times quantity n plus 2 times quantity n minus 4 equals 0. These three binomials break down to n plus 1 equals 0, n plus 2 equals 0, and n minus 4 equals 0. So the solutions are n equals negative 1, n equals negative 2, and n equals 4. All this was quite a bit of work to find our solutions, wasn't it? Imagine if we had solved by graphing with a calculator. And here is the cubic function for this equation entered in y1. And here is the function graphed. And we see from the arrows pointing to the function graphed with the calculator that the solutions found by factoring are the same that we found by a much more easily and quickly by graphing. 
We have shown the solution of cubic equations by the cube root method, by graphing, and by factoring. This has been Solving Cubic Equations. Thanks for viewing.